so the next concept is star at prime vertical see in this we can see it clearly so so here the star is present over here that is at the prime vertical then we can divide that is we can split some amount like this see if this is the vertical then i can take and this is the meridian and this is the prime vertical this is declination circle okay so here i will take the complementary of all the things like in the same how we had taken for the previous example so if this is altitude and this will be the complementary of altitude complementary of latitude and complementary of declination so i am writing these values in the circle with some order some order that is by napier's rule okay napier's rule so in the same way i will write the complements over here that is 90 minus h so here also i will write the complementary angle that is 90 minus m so now i am writing it in terms of circle so see here 90 minus alpha i am writing here and next to this term 90 minus m the same term i am going to write here okay so next 90 minus theta i am writing here 90 minus h here so the remaining term which is opposite to this angle so here one important concept that we can see here if the star is at the prime vertical then so prime vertical will be here you can get the 90 degree opposite of this thing same thing 90 minus of 90 minus delta 90 90 cancel minus into minus plus plus delta so opposite of this angle this delta i am going to write here so same thing in the napier's rule i had written all the things and it is ready now some substitution and calculations is, is there so some of the important terms that you need to remember always is this see this alpha okay alpha is altitude theta latitude declination means okay delta is declination and complementary of the things 90 minus of all these things okay if you remember these things clearly then everything will be easy in this unit okay the main concept over this unit is these things okay fine so now let us take sin rule let us apply the sin rule according to the napier's rule okay so if i am considering this see now i am taking this as a middle point okay that is sin of delta i am writing this part in terms of tangent if i am writing it in terms of tangent then i am going to take opposite sides if i am taking so one more okay before that one more code i will tell you while doing the napier's rule just remember one thing if you are writing in terms of tangent then adjacent you need to consider adjacent sides if you are taking in terms of cosine then you need to consider opposite terms if you remember this box okay then doing this thing is very easy so i am taking this in terms of so now i am taking this as a middle part i am writing it in terms of tangent tangent means adjacent side adjacent side of this is this and this fine so sin delta is equal to tan of 90 minus h into tan of 90 minus m fine so same thing if i am writing in terms of cosine then if i am taking again same this as a center if i am writing in terms of cosine so this will be the opposite parts which is equal to cos of 90 minus theta into again cos of 90 minus alpha so after seeing all this example you should be clear with napier's rule that is present in part 2 of my video if you are thorough with napier's rule then all the concepts will be very very easy so now let us move on to the next concept so see here the next concept is star at horizon 
see star at horizon means normally you know the if, if the observer is standing here if the star is present over here then it will become the altitude and this is assumed this is a normal concept we had studied in the previous slides okay in the present if the star at horizon means you people know this is horizon if the star is present at the horizon either here or here at the horizon itself then your altitude that is alpha will be equals to zero okay and zenith will be 90 degree you can see here zenith will be 90 degree these are the two concepts that is going to come when star is present at the horizon so what is meant by horizon zenith nadir everything is explained in the part one so if you had seen the part one then you can understand all this concept in a very clear manner fine so i'm just taking this expression okay this expression and all i had explained you in the part two itself okay so when the star it is at the horizon i know my altitude that is alpha will be zero is it clear so if i am substituting over here then my cos a okay then my cos a will be equals to sine delta okay sine delta by cos theta so cos of 0 is 1 okay tan of 0 is 0 so the entire term will be ruled out and you are going to get an expression like this this also can be written as sine delta into so what is 1 by cos 1 by cos is secant okay secant theta okay this is one expression similarly we can write one more expression that is so now same thing i am taking this expression in terms of cos h so similarly you know when the star is at the horizon okay at the time your alpha that is altitude will be zero if the star is at some other some this point at the time we'll get some altitude when the star is at horizon itself at the time my altitude will be zero okay similarly sine of zero so i am substituting the alpha over here so sine of zero is zero something divided by zero the entire term will become zero the remaining is minus tan delta into tan theta so the next concept is star at culmination see this is very important concept listen clearly so the star is said to be culminative when it crosses the observer's meridian okay before that see here this is the yellow thing what you can see here is horizon and this is equator <coughs> the same thing is shown here this is the horizon horizon is passing equator is passing here and the equator is written over here the star is said to be culminative when it crosses the observer's meridian okay see the whole thing is you know the celest celestial sphere and here lies a zenith and here lies a nadir okay and uh, equator poles everything you know the equator and horizon over here and the same zenith is here the same zenith i am showing here so just compare these two things so this is the 3d picture and while writing in the examination you need to put this figure so i am giving the comparison between this one and this one fine so you know what do you mean by observer's meridian observer's meridian okay that is explained in the part one clearly so here they are telling each star crosses the meridian twice in its revolution around the pole okay during the revolution of the star okay it crosses the meridian twice that is two times in its revolution okay so there are two culminations one is upper and other one is lower okay upper and lower upper is called as upper culmination when the altitude that is height that is alpha is more it is called as lower culmination okay when the altitude is less when compared to the above one 
okay you can see the two culminations that is during the revolution okay around the pole it is going to culminated for two times that is what it had been told here so that is star at culmination see in this you can understand the culminates that is upper and lower bit clear see the star m culminates the meridian at a and b here a is the upper culmination and b is the lower culmination that is because i told you altitude will be more then it is called as upper culmination c here the altitude is more when compared to this altitude is less over here and this is lower culmination similarly again star m1 being culminates at the point a1 and b1 again same thing here this is upper culmination and i this one is lower culmination so you came to know what is the difference between upper and lower culmination see now i am telling one important concept over here see just consider the zenith that is z z zenith point over here so here they are telling upper culmination a upper culmination a of the star m will be at the north side of the zenith Similar, similarly upper culmination of the a1 of the star m1 okay this is north will come at the south part of the zenith so this is north and this is see this is north so this is south and here comes the north okay this part is south and you can see this part is north okay so if you are taking a1 a1 is at the south that is here so a is at the north so now upper upper culmination a of the star m if it is upper culmination a, a then the star is m its zenith distance they are asking its zenith distance see this is zenith okay this part is zenith its zenith distance will be see i am taking it as za fine its zenith distance is za za is equal to this also can be written as if with respect to pole zp okay total distance is zp zp minus ap zp minus ap will be distance za so from z to p z to p you know this is complementary of latitude that i can return it as 90 minus theta okay similarly a to p that is 90 minus delta which is also called as co declination so if i can take this expression like this 90 minus theta minus 90 okay minus into minus plus delta 90 90 cancels which is equal to minus theta plus delta this can also be written at as delta minus theta so z a the point z a from z to this culmination point will be equal to okay declination minus latitude that is delta minus theta so this is the expression see similarly i am writing here i am if i am taking as point at the upper culmination at a1 from the point m1 in a similar way if i am taking considering this thing then i can take it as z a1 which is equal to p a1 minus p z which is also equal to this can be written it as 90 minus delta minus of 90 minus theta which 
after substitution you'll get an expression like this theta minus delta okay so this i'll take it as equation 1 this i'll take it as equation 2 this expression is with respect to this culmination okay this expression is with respect to this culmination so this is the concept so by this we can cover that means we had covered all the concepts in the module 3 the only thing that is only remaining thing we had left with the numerical problems that will be done in the next presentation that is in the next video see the motto of smart engineering academy is to make students to learn in a very smarter way so most probably in one more video i can completely finish the module 3 so to totally max to max one and half hour will be the total video length that is of four parts if you can see the all the videos for if you in the kind attention for one and a half hours then all the concept will be concepts will be easy and you can do the doing the exams very well thank you one and all meet you again in the next presentation that is in the next video lecturing so in that we are going to solve some numerical problems thank you one and all thanks for the kind attention hearing thank you